the other thing that I wanted to bring up here was the logic chip checker. We do have that that uh, that device in the lab. Basically, all you do is you put your device in the holes there, slam it down, put in 7400. That's the 7400 that you want to test, and go ahead, test, execute, bang. And it says fail or pass. So basically, it's giving you it's giving all combinations of inputs and it's testing the outputs, and it either fails it or passes it. So one way to ensure the fact that you get something wrong is if you pick up a chip and it's a 7410 and you put in it as a 7400, and you go ahead and say, OK, I'm going to test the 7400, but in reality, it's a 7410. What's it going to give you? It's going to say fail. And you're like, oh, this one's bad. The 7400 is bad. No. It's a good 7410, it's just not a 7400. So be aware of that. Use those lights and use those magnifying glasses to see what those numbers are. Be aware, too, that those drawers are not necessarily as well organized as I'd like them to be. So make sure you're picking out which one you got. OK, let's talk about some troubleshooting techniques with OR gates. So OR gates. And again, what would happen if there was a break right here? It'd be a constant high. And regardless of what this signal is, this thing could be all over. This thing is going to give you a constant high because remember, 0 or 1 is 1, regardless of what this signal is. Okay. So how do you test some OR gates? What you do is... In contrast to our AND gates, where we hooked up a plus 5 to one terminal, we're going to hook one terminal to ground, 0 volts, and pulse the input. And ideally, if that's working correctly, we should have the same input signal, A, come out of the output terminal. OK, because that's logical 0 or a basically it would mean a is coming out okay so helps to know how these things perform and again that first sentence to recognize incorrect performance you need to know what the output should be so those were internally open inputs internally open outputs could be again it's like a break in one of these wires right here too so like our so Pin one, two, and three on our seventy four hundred quad input, quad two input NAND. Let's say there's a break right here, and you've got a pulsed signal A coming in and a pulse signal B coming in. What comes out of 3? Let's just pretend total flat line. What's wrong here, guys? It's basically there's a break in the output. So even though you're changing the input, you're not getting an output. OK, uh, one of the other things that you need to be aware of, not so much for stuff we're doing in prototyping, but printed circuit boards. Those are conductive paths, pretend. And they're going along. What could happen here if a piece of conductive wire lands across those things? Basically, they've been shorted out. Um, solder balls. Let's say put the, the solder is right here. You're soldering in a chip. And again, the chip's on the other side here. Um, so you're, you're putting it in. It's a through hole right there. And then all of a sudden, you got a, just a little too much solder there, and a little bridge forms. What you happen is, again, it's the same thing as this wire. Oops. Same thing as that wire. Um, it's shorting out those two connections. So what would happen is basically A and B are coming together. So you're having the same inputs into a NAND gate. OK, so be aware of that. The other thing is, remember, these are on the other side. You know, you could be looking at a printed circuit board. Yep, that's hooked up there. That's hooked up there. Um, I don't know what the problem is. Well, check it out. Spin it over on the other side. Here's our conductive paths. 
and there's the quarter that you lost the other day in the access box banging around and it is landed stuck onto there and it's shorting out these two connections there so be aware of that and the quarter story is true guys that that's a, that's a true story these access boxes that are inside a wind turbine you know they're a box and then you open them up inside is a bunch of bunch of printed circuit boards and batteries etc cetera, etc cetera, capacitors and leaning over it one day and your change falls into there and you're like dang it so you go ahead and pick out as many pennies and nickels and quarters that you can you think you got everything you think you started off with 64 cents but guess what you had 70 cents and there's a, a nickel and a penny in there rattling around like pac-man and what happens when it bridges something zap okay so be aware that those things are on the other side yeah the side that you're looking at might be good but the other side may not be so good okay let us talk about programmable logic devices